regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board meeting. If you would all kindly turn off your cell phones so they don't interfere with our TV feed, I would appreciate it. And at this time, if everyone would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Lynn, if you would do roll call, please. <coughs> sure. President Wasserman is absent. Vice President Bar Branstad? Here. Secretary Baker? Here. Treasurer Singer? Here. Member Frizee? Here. Member Gordon? Here. And Member McCart? Here. All right, six out of seven. Next up is our consent agenda. We have approval of meeting minutes from October 19th. Following staff members have announced their resignations, <laughs> effective to the dates noted. Bids have been accepted and tabulation is provided for bid package for demolition of parts of Central Middle School. <coughs> Approval of the payment of the school system's bills for October and legal invoice payments. Do I have a motion? I move to approve uh, items in the consent agenda, items 2.1 through 2.5. Second. All right, moved by Pam, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? No. All right, seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Moving into the next Board of Education Matters, presentation to the board. Do you want to? We're very excited, I think, about our first presentation. Every time Barbara comes and presents, it seems <laughs> like we have some, lots of kids, so we're excited about having them. Might have been the most uh, impressive Pledge of Allegiance we've ever had here as well with those kids here, so that was kind of nice to see. So I'll let Mr. Lauer introduce everyone and we'll move forward. Good evening. First of all, thank you for inviting us to share our Carpenter Leadership Programs with you this evening. Last year, there were several leadership groups at Carpenter Street School. We had a traditional student council made up of fifth grade students and a community student leadership group made up of first through fifth grade students. Additionally, we provided our second year of the project-based learning summer camp. This evening, we have brought the teacher advisors of these groups, as well as some of the participating students to share with you how these programs have been implemented within our school. Good evening. My name is Jen Service and I am the PYP coordinator at Carpenter Street School. Um, as you know, Midland Public Schools is implementing the primary years program in our elementary buildings. Last year, Carpenter Street School was in the consideration phase of the program. Our school-wide focus was the implementation of the learner profile attributes and attitudes into our school community. The learner profile is truly the heart of the PYP. It is who we want the students to become. The attitudes in the PYP are how they will get there. I would like to introduce you to second graders Zachary Kyneth and third grader Katherine Potts. They are going to share part of their PYP journey with you. Hi, my name is Zachary. The PYP has taught me many things. I have learned to be more caring about each other, our school, and our community. We have learned about becoming risk takers. Every day we are risk takers when we share our thoughts and ideas with others. We are also respectful of others' thoughts and ideas. We are learning to be good communicators. One thing that we practice is our nonverbal communication. Our body language can send many messages to others. We need to be sure we are sharing positive messages. Hi, I'm Catherine. The PYP has taught me to be principled. I have learned to stop and think before I speak and act. My words and actions affect others. It is important that we are careful not to hurt other people's feelings. We have learned to be more confident. 
It takes confidence to be a risk taker and share ideas with each other. We are inquirers and ask a lot of questions. We have a place in the classroom that we can put all of our questions about things we wonder about. We have learned that we need to ask questions to find things out. Hi, my name is Chelsea Silve, and I am the teacher leader for our project-based learning program, or PBL. Um, for the last two summers, we've invited students to participate in our PBL summer camp. Um, at the camp, we give students a driving question, um, and then students take the lead in their learning by creating an action plan based on this driving question. Um, so I'm now going to introduce two fourth grade students, Samantha Binkley and McKenna Wheel, to share their experience. Hi, my name is Samantha. I attended the PBL camp this past summer. When, on the first day of PBL camp, the teachers gave us a driving question. This year, our driving question was, what makes a hero? As a PBL group, we brainstormed ideas about heroes. My idea of a hero is someone that takes care of animals. My group decided to go to the Humane Society because that is a place that takes care of animals. On our visit, they showed us around. They showed us where they take dogs for walks, and they showed us where they keep the medicine for the animals. We got to hold some of the kittens. We asked a lot of questions while we were, we were there and learned that the Humane Society needs money for medicine and blankets to keep the baby animals warm. We decided to take action. We took photos while we, we were on our visit. We made a poster to share with the community about when about the needs of the Humane Society. On the last day of camp, we held an expedition and shared projects with our parents, community members, and MPS administration. We shared our poster and needs of the Humane Society. We had a donation jar at our display, and in that short time, we raised $7. We donated that money and a blanket that my grandma made to the Humane Society. We received a letter from Evie from the Humane Society. She told us that she appreciated our help and she was happy that we got donations for them. This is one small way that we took action and we were able to help our community. Hi, my name is McKenna and I attended the PBL camp in August of 2014. Our driving question had to do with promoting healthy living to the Carpenter family in the Midland community. My group decided to make snacks with healthy ingredients called granola balls. We decided to share our healthy snack with the residents of Riverside because we thought that they might like to see, a, see and visit with the younger kids. We made the snacks at school and walked over to Riverside to deliver them. We shared our granola bars with the residents. We ate and talked together. We shared our recipe with them in hopes that they would make them again on our own. We also gave the residents toothbrushes. While we were there, we got to help with the parachute exercise class. It made me feel good that we did something nice for people that don't get many visitors. With this small <coughs> action, we hope to brighten their day and share the mes message of healthy living. Another leadership program that we have at Carpenter Street School is Student Council. Our Student Council group is comprised of fifth grade students. The Student Council is the governing body of our school. Here to share with you about our Student Council are fifth graders Ben Root and Sydney Clough. Hi, I'm Ben. I am proud to be a member of the Student Council at Carpenter Street School. Fifth grade teachers select student council members after receiving input from students' previous teachers. The, the teachers look for students that are principled, caring, responsible, and good communicators to lead our school. I was a member of the community student leader group last year. I think 
that help me develop leadership skills. I am good at figuring things out. I am a good communicator and can share our student council ideas with the Everyday Heroes group. I'm respectful and listen to the ideas of others. I am working to make our school a great place. I would like to share with you some of the things that student council does at our school. We organize all the school spirit days. This is a way to show that our school is a team and we support each other. Student council polls each class to see how many students participate on each spirit day. Some of the spirit days we have planned this year are sports day, pajama day, beach day, and hat day. Hi, my name is Sydney. I was also a community student leader last year, and I am now so excited to be a member of the student council. We also organize spirit wear sales for our school. We promote and communicate our school activities on the morning announcements. We also make posters and visit classrooms to keep everyone informed. We will be walking in the Santa Parade next Saturday to show our school spirit. This year, we decide to take our efforts a step further. A big part of PYP and PBL is taking action. We wanted to take action at our school to help our community. As a student council team, we brainstormed ways that we could help our community. Our first idea was a food drive. We recognized that there are many people right here in our community that need our help. We presented our idea to the Everyday Heroes group, and they agreed that this was a good way to, that we could take action to help out. We are currently running a food drive at our school. We are collecting non-perishable items and personal care items for our community. We hope that this small action will make a big impact, especially as we approach the holiday season. If you are interested in donating, please stop by Carpenter Street School and drop off your donation. Our drive runs through Wednesday. As of today, we have 1,000 items. Wow. Good evening. My name is Barbara Jacques, and I'm the music teacher at the school and also one of the advisors of these groups. McKenna Wheel and I will tell you about the community student leaders and everyday heroes. McKenna, will you get us started? Hi, my name is McKenna. Last year I was community student leader. We explored and studied the PY the learner profile attribute, attributes and attitudes, and served as school ambassadors by sharing meeting reports school-wide. I was also one of eight <coughs> Carpenter community student leaders who participated in a community event titled Emerging Leaders. We presented vision, vision speeches, which included a community action idea. My action idea was I have seen a bunch of trash around and I think we should go around and look in parks for recycling garbage and recycle it so our community is clean and not polluting. This year, Everyday Heroes evolved from the shared designs of community student leaders, primary years program, and project-based learning. We understand the learner profile attributes and attitudes and are now ready to live them, united, in action. Our student council and Everyday Heroes groups are connected. We meet both separately and together, working toward common goals. Our student council members identify community needs, which are then brought to the Everyday Heroes for team action. As you can see, we are working together to make our school a better, play, a better place. Together, the primary years program, project-based learning, and everyday heroes and student council help us practice ways to be a friend, a scholar, and a role model. 
These programs have taught us to not only care about our community, but also the world around us. When we got together as a group at the beginning of the year, the teacher asked us, why do we care about all this? Our response was, now we see things. We reflect as a group, and we decide together how we can make a change. If we don't take action, we can't make a change. We are changing our school and our community for the better. Think about how you could help. Thank you for having us this evening. And thank you for caring. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any comments, questions? You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to all, all these different groups that you have going on at Carpenter makes me excited about our future and these leaders. And so many times we have a few leaders, but with all the programs you shared tonight, it just is exciting to see that so many um, kids are developing great skills and you guys are amazing. Thank you. How many of you were scared to get up there and talk? Raise your hand. Oh. I couldn't tell. Yeah, you guys were tell. phenomenal. You guys are great public speakers. I couldn't tell anybody was scared. That was <laughs> fantastic. And did you know that all of the people and all of the organizations that you help through your action ideas and through your different project-based learning projects, those people look at you as heroes? And so do we. So thank you very much. I think you demonstrated here tonight that you at your very young ages are thinking about some very adult things and I'm really excited about when you guys get to be adults you're just going to keep going I can tell you I think you're going to do amazing things you already are thank you for coming here tonight and telling us all the things you're doing and I would add you are doing amazing things and just think you're, you're young you're only in elementary school <laughs> I can't wait to see what you do in middle school and high school and then when you're adults. So thank you, Zachary and Catherine, Samantha McKenna, and Ben and Sydney and all your teachers. I, I can't wait. I'm going to come over to Carpenters and, um, before Wednesday and I'm going to make a donation. To your <laughs> <laughs> You've worked very hard. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you thank all you. very much. Fabulous job. I don't know if I can public speak as well as they are, but I'm going to no, give, give it a try here. So. <laughs> um, our first uh, Shining Star of the Month is going to be Laura Wolanin, if Laura would come up. Let me read a little bit about Laura. It is always exciting for us to have an MPS graduate return as a dedicated educator. Laura Wallanen is just, an MP, just such an MPS staff member. She was a Chestnut Hill chipmunk, a Northeast Viking, and a 2002 Midland High Chemex Honor graduate. Ms. Laura Wallanen earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in Special Education, graduating summa cum laude from Western Michigan University in 2007. She is currently completing her Master's degree in Reading from Concordia University. Before coming to Midland, Ms. Wallanen taught in Special Education Department of the Green Bay Area <coughs> Public School District in Wisconsin for six years. Laura's Midland Public Schools teaching career began as a Special Education teacher in a shared position between Carpenter Street School and Adams Elementary in 2013. For the 2014-15 school year, Laura was the Behavior Resource Room teacher at Carpenter Street School only, the position she holds today. Supervisors of Ms. Wolanin have commented Laura looks for the opportunities to develop the strengths of each child she works with. She takes the extra time to build learning opportunities for all students and increases outcomes for all. Laura continues to grow and find unique and effective ways in which to engage students and promote positive behavior. Laura was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS colleague. Here are some of her comments. Laura's work in her behavior resource room and, and spends countless hours making sure her students have the best possible experience they can. She has an outstanding relationship with the parents of her students and continues to work hard day in and day out. She maintains a positive attitude and is an outstanding coworker. She absolutely deserves to be named Shining Star for all of her hard work and dedication. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank yeah. you. And you can turn around and shake all the bourbon. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our second shining star is Mary Shilton. Mary would come up. And let me read a little bit about Mary. Mary began her Midland Public Schools career as a paraprofessional at Midland High School in 1997. In 1998, Mary joined the Office of Tech Technical Professional Ranks as the Midland High School Switchboard Receptionist. In 2001, Mary was appointed as the Office Technical Professional in the Counseling Center at Midland High. In 2005, Mary was promoted to the Office of Technical Professional Position in the Coordinators Wing, working with Math and so Social Studies Coordinators. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2014, with the reorganization of the Curriculum Office, Ms. Shilton's position was reclassified into the MPS Manager's ranks to State Testing and Assessment Specialists. In her current position, Ms. Shilton coordinates all MDA mandated summative assessments, manages internal data systems, and creates data profiles as requested for internal usage and external reporting. Supervisors of Ms. Shilton have commented, Mary routinely meets deadlines when given specific tasks to accomplish. She often does this with regard, disregard for personal time, as the recent legislative changes have mandated many unforeseen metrics and tasks. She completes work with fidelity consistently ahead of the expected deadlines. Mary was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS colleague. Here are some of his comments. Mary consistently helps others and is a source of leadership when decisions need to be made. She has become a regional so resource and her expertise is often sought by other school districts. Respect for her opinions and actions among colleagues is widespread. She maintains a professional demeanor and optimistic approach in the face of persistent adversity. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. Congratulations to both Laura and Mary, and thank you very much for all you do for children of our district. Moving on to Board of Education matters, we have summer tax collection request. I, oh, and I everyone's that. leaving. <laughs> oh, sure. I get to bring all the good news. I always. see taxes, they all get up and leave. <laughs> I'll give them a the second here over. then. Yeah. I can't believe it's not as exciting. It's true. <laughs> But thank you all for coming tonight. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Roger's still here now. <laughs> all right, I'll get started because this is one that we uh, commonly have to do each year. And it's really just according to the state regulations, if we want the city to collect half of our school property taxes, including our debt service. In the summer, we have to make an annual resolution before January 1st. So that's what we have in front of us is a resolution that's asking the city to collect one half of that only within or with property that's been in the city of Midland, uh, the townships, uh, and other areas collected all in their winter taxes. The city we're asking to split between the two. So we've done that on an annual basis. We just need to do it uh, again at this time. All right. I'm looking for I would uh, motion to approve item 4.1 summer tax collection rec uh, request. Second. All right. All right, is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, passes. <coughs> Next, request <coughs> to address the board. I don't think we've received any, have we? Okay, is there anyone who would like to address the board at this time? All three of you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> anyone, anyone? Dang. No, okay. Moving on then, administrative services. Study committee chair, Scott McFarland. Did you have a meeting? Yes, you have minutes. I do, but Patrick was filling in for me, so he's gonna read them. Okay, tonight. excellent, right. Patrick. At the November 16th meeting, Board of Education meeting, Mr. Chair will bring for action to the Board of Education policy changes to a number of Midland Public Schools policies. 
as recommended by NEOLA in our fall 2015 updates. NEOLA retains law firms to provide legal reviews of published materials and consults on policy updates in the spring and fall of each year. Therefore, le the legal accuracy and compliance proposed provisions can be unequivocally guaranteed. Mr. Chair discussed the proposed policy changes with the Administrative Services Committee members as follows. Uh, one, policies related to weapons, uh, specifically numbers 1217, 3217, 5772, 7217, and 8400. And number two, policies related at field trips, um, specifically 2340 and 2340C. Um, policies presented for updates at uh, tonight's meeting. All right, thank you very much. Item 6.2 for action. Do uh, you want to say anything on it or do you just want me to? No, there's an, as we said, you know, there, there's <coughs> a quarterly updates and we'll get those on a regular basis. Um, we'll review them in committee um, when needed. Right. Um, there was a couple there I thought that we should review. Um, a couple of hot topics, you know, going on right now with uh, waiting for our legislators to act on some of those weapon um, type issues in schools. And so, um, Good policies set to go. Um, and there was quite a few on financial um, pieces in there. Um, Pam's familiar with those, and so I think we're we're ready to, to approve those and make the changes. Okay. All right. This time I'm looking for a motion. Then I'll move approval of um, agenda item 6.2, the Neola Fall 2015 policy revision. All right. Support. Moved by Yvonne. Supported by Pam. The Neola Fall 2015 policy revisions. Is there any discussion? Uh, you know, all the policies, uh, there was a stack of them, so it was a lot uh, to go through. But um, I'm appreciative of the having Neola uh, to rely on to give us good information, legal insight on um, all the new legislation that comes out and, and how we can react to it and the choices we have. <coughs> and. Um, the, the choices that we did make were all for the safety of the kids. So I feel real confident in, in uh, all of those policies. Any other comments? Yes, they're quite the manuals. There's like two of them this big. A few years ago, we went through them page by page. <laughs> so, remember that, Cindy? <laughs> yes. All right, all those in favor, say aye. All, right. All those opposed? All right, passes. Moving on, item seven, <coughs> curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, <coughs> Lynn. Yes, we met at Midland High on October 19th, and the committee and uh, Scott Cochran and Jeff Jaster also joined us. And we started with a CTE update and a welding program tour. Scott Cochran presented general information on the status of the MPS career and technical education programs. After general discussion, specific information was provided on the welding program. Course enrollments in welding have expanded to six sections for the 2015-16 school year. The informational session was followed by a tour of the welding facilities, and it was led by instructor Corey Pollock and student Cody Heckman. Next, uh, we talked about the music program and had a tour, an update. Following the tour of the welding facilities, the group visited the orchestra, band, and choir rooms. The tour was followed up with a question and answer session facilitated by Mr. Cochran. Updates on enrollment numbers, elementary scheduling, and plans for staff feedback on the new auditorium design were discussed. And as always, we had a great meeting and um, our visit to to the welding program was amazing to see what, what these students have accomplished the, and the awards they have won and just the enthusiasm and the insight, excitement of um, the students in that program. And of course, it's always, always fun to go see our beautiful music room. So uh, we will be meeting again on November 23rd. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, they came in and showed projects, the welding classes. They were amazing. and. They were talking about the programs they have, and I went back to work, and I was like, oh my gosh, because we need people who know welding where I work, because we have welders. <laughs> so it was, it was a great connection. Yes, there are jobs out there. <laughs> so, All right, moving on to item eight, which is FFO. Pam. Okay, I have the minutes here from November 9th. Uh, the members present, 
present were myself, uh, Patrick Brzee, Gerald Wasserman, mm -hmm. Mr. Shero, and Mr. Cooper. Uh, we had guests present, Daryl Dumbrow from Barton Mallow and Dale Jerome from French and Associates. Uh, Mr. Cooper reviewed the following three items to be acted on at the November 16th Board of Education meeting. One was a ta summer tax collection request to the city to collect half the school's annual tax levy, including debt services during the summer tax collection. The second was the purchase of the district's property and casualty insurance from Yider Insurance Group for a total cost of $238,098, a savings of $24,302 from last year. The third item was an amendment to the cafeteria plan to allow for a, a health savings account contributions. There was a bond update. Mr. Jerome from French Associates reviewed the current plans with the latest al alterations from the STEM elementary school. Mr. Dombrow from Barton Mallow reviewed current bond projects and the award recommendation for the building demolition work at Central Middle School. Cost estimates for the STEM elementary were discussed. And our next uh, FFO meeting will be December 7th. Excellent, thank you very much. Next, item 8.2. 8.2 is for information. Uh, we have 12 gifts tonight, uh, totaling $9,591.61. Uh, you'll see they range from uh, media center books at Siebert, some Thanksgiving dinners at JCC, uh, we had art supplies at uh, Woodcrest, some music at Dow High, uh, and there's uh, various sports ones here, a couple for the girls' sport, uh, swim team, and one for girls' volleyball, and, and this one tonight for the American Chemical Society, we had uh, three different $500 gifts to uh, different chemistry science teachers for uh, different programs across the district. So like always, we're very appreciative uh, of all the gifts that we, that we received there. Under... 8.3, um, this is for action. It's our property and casualty insurance, which were just mentioned in the FFO meeting. Uh, it is the Yider Insurance Group. Uh, the coverages are the same as they were in previous years. Uh, the premium for the annual premium, excuse me, is $238,098, and that is down about $24,300 from the previous year, uh, somewhat due to a slight reduction in bus fleet and also because of the properties that we will no longer have to insure with buildings on them and so that makes a, a slight difference in that so that was the offset from there and what we need uh, for action here is for you to approve that coverage for that cost all right do I have a motion I'll motion to approve item 8.3 the property and casualty um, insurance support all right, moved by Pam, supported by Lynn. Is there any discussion? Is this a, a policy package that's built, bid out annually, or is it, I, I keep seeing IUTA come up and I never hear anything about yeah, other it's, competitions. It's not bid out price. annually, it's bid out at different times. There's no uh, mandated time. One of the reasons that we didn't bid this year is because of our, especially with the bond, the changing situation we were gonna be in insurance-wise in a very short period of time, the right. timing wasn't very good to um, bid out and be fair to people who are bidding uh, because of what was changing. So okay. we stuck with them. But uh, there's no set time period. We're looking ahead to say, when are we going to be stable to sit there and say, let's put this out for bid, and, and it's not a fair, uh, I would understand where we're at and which buildings we have and don't have and, and all those things. So okay. we do try to. Next year may be an opportunity, cause, um, but then the following fall we're, adding the new elementary school right. in as well and then eventually at the end of the bond then we're going to decrease a few more buildings again so somewhere in between we'll definitely build a bit, uh, bit out again okay it's nice to see some of the supplementary things that are effective reducing the number of buildings we have yes yeah so you see bonuses that. everywhere we're turning right, around exactly. now it's great mm -hmm. yeah. cost savings everywhere yep all right all those is there any more discussion take a vote all right all those in favor say aye. aye aye all those opposed all right passes okay then 8.4 um this one's a little different it took a little bit of research when it first came up too because it we don't do this very often so this is technically the second amendment to our restated little public schools cafeteria plan and what the cafeteria plan really allows to do is to the medical 
uh, plans around allows employees to contribute pre-tax dollars to, it just depends on which one we're trying to approve. And since the medical plan is changing to an HSA, we had to have that added into the plan so that they would be able to do that. And so it was a matter of really two things, getting that HSA in there, also removing the old uh, medical FSA, which you can't have both at the same time. And then also we had the attorney at that time read it over because, as you know, uh, a lot of this is for the IRS and you want to make sure that you stay current. I think the last time uh, that the capture plan was amended was like 2010. So well, I had them go through the plan just to make sure we were good every place else. And so this is really allowing uh, employees to contribute to their HSA pre-tax hours. And it has to be that. So we need uh, actually for you to authorize the superintendent to sign that into our plan. All right. I'm looking for a motion. So move. So the, the motion is to authorize Mike to sign yep. this yes. into, into what? It's into our cafeteria plan. Into our cafeteria it's, plan. Okay. It's not something that's a resolution that goes out to anybody. It is a document that we keep then okay. for, for our purpose. Just so we're clear for our yep. record, mm -hmm. we make the motion. Um, I guess I'll make it since I asked the question. Under, I'll move under 8.4 to authorize Mike to uh, sign this document into our cafeteria plan. Support. Wait, was that you, Pam? Sorry, I wasn't, <coughs> I wasn't looking up. <laughs> so, okay, moved by Scott, supported by Pam. Is there any discussion? All right. Nope. HSAs. I think a lot of us have had those for a long time. Did I take the vote? Yes, I know. Okay. So, all right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Human resources. I think was there a meeting? No meeting. No. Okay. So we have uh, two staff members who have passed away. We'd like to recognize um, in their honor tonight. And the first is Miss Bet Ann Howe, who passed away on November 3rd, 2015. She was a paraprofessional with first graders at Seabird Elementary for 28 years, retiring in 2002. And the second is Mr. Thomas Slomkowski, who passed away on October 29th, 2015. Mr. Slomkowski taught elementary physical education in fifth grade at Longview, started special education program at Midland High, taught special education at Central taught history and driver's education at Dow and Midland High. I was named Outstanding Secondary Educator in 1973 and was a Gerstecker Teacher Award recipient in 1965. Mr. Slumkowski taught at Midland Public Schools for 30 years, retiring in 1985. Quite a career. Mm -hmm. oh, thoughts go out to their families. Yeah. Item 9.2, we have a retirement. Mr. Terry Gay, skilled trades mechanic in the maintenance department, announced his a retirement effective February 15th, 2016. And under 9.3, we need you to take action to, um, correct, action. Yes, no, I think we better we'll be safe. We'll take action um, to uh, approve the Midland City, City Education Association leasing uh, Mr. Jerome Lombardo as he has become president of MCA for the 2015-16 school year. Let's go ahead and take a vote to make sure we cover that one. All right, so I'm looking for a motion first. I move we approve agenda item 9.3 to um, a contract lease for Mr. Jerome Lombardo, president of the MCEA for the remainder of the 2015-16 school year. <coughs> Second. All right, moved by Yvonne, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? This is in response to Vi's retirement. Correct. Mm -hmm. Transition. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. This is. Item 10 in your agenda is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item 11 is the scheduled activities for information. Our next meeting is December 14th, and then the <coughs> meetings after that are all tentative. Now we will move into study discussion session. The first item on the agenda is the Board of Education Officers Nominating Committee. And every year at this time, we, from our board, elect three members of the board to get together and come up with the slate for next year, for the 2016 calendar year. <coughs> so do you have 
the slips of paper. No. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> So what we do is everyone just gets a piece of paper, write down the three members of the board who you would like to represent us to come up with this slate of officers and also committee positions. And then these are actually voted on at our first meeting in January. Is there any questions? If you can fill them out, Cindy will tally them. Yes, Cindy will tally them. Just when, yep, I saw that, so. Oh, I got two. Do I get to vote Thanks twice? <laughs> When you're done, just put them up here and Cindy can. <coughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, we're throwing it on the floor. <clears throat> Cindy, get it. I dropped mine, Cindy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it didn't hit the floor. Oh, well, you can have it. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. No hanging chads on that. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had, like, no. <laughs> so, all right, at this time, we will hear from all our board members. <clears throat> Scott, I will start with you tonight. Okay. Um, just to congratulate uh, the Carpenter Group again that was here. Like I said, I thought they were fantastic. Um, it was kind of a crazy day for me, and it was nice to come in tonight and to see those kids. It really brought a smile to my face. Um, that stuff aside, we were at the, uh, I was at the MASB um, conference up in Traverse City, and I was able to attend a couple classes. The first one was avoiding fiscal distress, which is kind of a snoozer, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and it was really geared more toward districts that are really, really in financial trouble, and I think we're doing a really good job navigating um, that pitfall. Uh, so not much to talk about there. The cool one that I really liked was uh, school district safety and security. And I thought it was really interesting only because I didn't really have a good grip on protocols that we have here. Um, and obviously not the forum to uh, have that discussion on our protocols, but maybe during a committee meeting um, or something, or Mike, maybe we can discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, really sweeping uh, generalization. Uh, you know, what would we do if we woke up one morning and Dow High was gone? Um, either by terrorist ta attack or a tornado or whatever, what do we do as a board? It wasn't more what does the administration do, but how do we react with the public? How do we react with the community? Um, what decisions do we have to make and get the ball rolling and, and things like that? So that was cool. Um, there was a, a big discussion about school board safety. Um, they played a video of a, a, an actual school board shooting that took place in Florida. First time I saw that video and heard about it, and it was kind of riveting to sit there and, and watch it all play out and you could hear the conversation between the shooter and the board members and the superintendent. Um, so they talked a lot about that. They talked about um, just different scenarios that go on in schools, active shooter situations and, and things like that. Um, so that was, that was I thought, very enlightening and I, I'm going to give this uh, Just a brief comment on that one without getting too far. Sure. <coughs> as a county and Saginaw County as well participates it's actually four counties and I don't remember all the counties he represents so we have a gentleman Tom Minesburg former law enforcement I, I know Tom. officer yep so we use Tom for our protocols and um, we do have protocols in place but Tom is coming in um, to um, retrain our administrators and our entire teaching staff on the February PD date that we have and so we're st trying to stay as current as we can with everything we're doing. What that's yeah, I mean, it, it was it was neat. I'm not I'm not being critical at all. Um, I'm just just things that you don't think about, like plants in front of a window by the <coughs> office. You, your your vision's blocked on who's approaching. Um, putting lamination on glass to prevent somebody from smashing it, or, or at least <coughs> giving you time to react. Uh, stuff like that. So I thought that was a really really great class, and I really took a lot out of it. And I'm going to give this to Cindy to copy, and and you guys can can certainly have a copy of it, but. Um, good information there. So that's really all I had tonight. Thank you. All right. Patrick. All right. I want to again thank the Carpenter students from here. Every meeting has been just something to be so proud of to hear from different schools, and that uh, tonight was no different. Wonderful to hear and their enthusiasm, their speech, their voices, and their speeches. It's it's contagious. Good to hear kids that young, that happy to be at school. That uh, definitely leads to long-term success. You got to you got to think. Um, I too went spent some time at the conference uh, last month. I didn't go much to security. I went to more of the STEM presentations, which intrigued me. Uh, kind of like Scott, I had one that was 
not so great one that I one that I enjoyed. Um, got me really excited for what we're doing here. Um, I don't we're not quite ready for what they're talking in that classroom yet, but hearing what they're saying makes me really confident that Mike's got us on the right track and that we're doing the right things. It's uh, heard heard a speaker I think afterwards Lynn and Pam and myself talked and it was we all had some of the same uh, what's the word here I'm looking for some of the same. Uh, we're both all happy hearing what was going on and the same enthusiasm. It's nice to see maybe some potential speakers down the road that we'd heard that would be wonderful for uh, maybe groundbreaking once we get to school ready to go, closer to go. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have too much else uh, new for tonight. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Lynn. Well, Echo, uh, being at the, the school board conference was, um, it's, it's always a great opportunity and uh, we, just for the four of us to enjoy um, getting together and, and um, discussing what we you know what we learn up over there but also you meet so many other people from all over the state and you realize that we all have the same kinds of problems but yet we have some different ones as well and you can share those ideas so if you come back re-energized or at least I did and I realized what a great district it is to be in Midland um, compared to some of the challenges that some other districts have so and uh, I, I attended a couple different ones uh, of the um, speakers in the clinics and one was on board self-evaluation and it might be w well worth us talking about that. They were talking about the changeover in board members. They're expecting a thousand board members to change over next year and uh, just talking about um, as things are changing in the schools that it's a good thing to, be, to look into. Uh, one that I went to on um, it was a clinic, just a shorter session was put on by uh, one of the school districts and it was talking about elementary schools. This elementary school has a lunch time club in it on coding and programming. Fascinating to listen to what first graders are doing all the way up to fifth grade and uh, they're doing this at lunch time and these kids are programming I, and they, they gave um, the names of a couple of the free programs they're using. So I said, I left there and I said, that is a challenge to me. I'm going to try to do it. If first graders can do it, <laughs> maybe I can do it. So um, I have yet to try it, but uh, anyway, that is one of my goals. Uh, and then just, um, I'd like to uh, congratulate Laura Willan and Mary Chilton again. I'm really feeling my age because Laura graduated with my kiddos. And now to see her receiving an award as a, as a wonderful teacher in our district just kind of puts things in a perspective that I don't necessarily want to admit. And um, I remember when Mary Chilton was working back in the counseling department when my oldest kids were there. So congratulations to them. And then just a lot of other congratulations. Chestnut Hill, those of us that are proud Chipmunk parents, we've been very excited with their Blue Ribbon um, <coughs> School Award. And um, it's just very exciting for, for all of us to be able to share on that. And I went to see uh, Midland High per perform To Kill a Mockingbird, and as usual, I'm always amazed at the talent of our students. And of course, uh, there's all the Dow High uh, football excitement, and it, I know it didn't turn out exactly the way they wanted, but kudos to them. How exciting to get that far, that far along in the, in the playoffs. And I believe the swim team did well, and volleyball, all those fall sports are winding down, and they have a lot to be proud of, as do their bands and all their other support, uh, groups that support them. And last of all, th happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sure everybody's ready for, for some downtime with family and friends. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yipan. Well, I just want to echo what Lynn said about Chestnut Hill. I always knew Chestnut Hill was special. I knew that <laughs> was one of the first days I walked in there. But I'm, I also want to say congratulations to everybody at Chestnut Hill. And I also want to say that I'm very, very happy that my daughters had the good fortune to begin their formal education there. I think it has served them well all these years. And then also, these students from Carpenter that were here tonight and the teachers just overwhelmed me. I was on the verge of tears for a minute there, but I was able to <laughs> overcome it. <laughs> um, I just think it's so amazing I read the gong or every day and so I see all these complaints that people have about their schools and their teachers and so on and I think we're so fortunate. We have, I believe we have the most dedicated professionals in our schools 
that you could find anywhere. I just, I, have, I, I, I knew that the first day I walked into Chestnut Hill too. So I just um, thank them for coming tonight and what they're doing at Carpenter is so amazing to me because children don't learn to be caring, thinking adult or children and then go on to be, to lose those things as they grow older. They are children who will grow up to be caring adults as well and I think that is just so awesome I just I just the values that are being instilled in them right now they talked about you know caring and communicating being risk takers and being principled action takers it's just overwhelming I think but anyway thank you so much to everybody at Carpenter for just how dedicated you are to your jobs and to your students and to MPS very and good. happy Thanksgiving everybody hope you all have a nice holiday very good I echo that uh, Midland High has Rhapsody on Friday. I'm looking forward to that. And um, one thing that caught my eye was uh, Dow High had a group of students who um, were able to raise money for clean water coolers and uh, replacement water for the Flint School District, that for an elementary school there. And I just uh, was real touched with how uh, the group of students really reached out to another district and another community to show support. Um, also, there's a proposal in the legislature uh, right now about the Detroit Public School and the debt there, and I'm watching that and interested to see what happens. It looks like the obligation of that debt could fall on all the Michigan school districts, and, and for Midland Public, it could be as much as uh, $50 per student, which would be about $387,500 if we look at student counts. Um, and that's about Time's 46 10 years. That's every year, year. Yeah. For, for a decade. So um, something to keep watching and uh, see what happens. It is kind of scary to look forward and think of all the schools that could have debt and then w will this be uh, the schools that aren't in debt uh, responsibility to pull them out. I don't know where that's going to go. So it's a little scary. Uh, definitely want to keep our eye on it and, and give your two cents to the your senators and your representatives. Um, thoughts and prayers with the families in France and the anxiety that that creates with all the school kiddos in, the, um, in that area as well. Um, kudos for the U.S. News best high schools, Dow and Midland High were both in the top 60 high schools out of Let's see, 29,070 public high schools. So pretty exciting news there. And the last uh, thing that caught my eye was uh, poetry off the page, the arts integration workshop that happened here uh, last month with 26 of our teachers that were involved in bringing arts into the, the classroom and, and using it as a teaching tool. So uh, I, I was excited to see all the faces in the crowd from Midland Public Schools, and I think that's our students are going to be the benefactors of that. Happy Thanksgiving. That's all I have. All right, thank you. All right, well, I missed the last board meeting because of the Midland Dow Girls Swim Meet, which was fabulous. So they, I don't know how long they've been doing this, but it was um, senior night for both high schools, which... You know, I don't know for as many people, but given where I live, we know kids on both teams, and it was very nice. The girls all got together. They sang the um, national anthem together. They um, both had their senior nights. It was a fabulous night, so I hated to miss the board meeting, but definitely I was you know, at another MPS activity. Um, another thing, someone mentioned Dow High's football program. I got to tell you, last it was two Friday nights ago. I was driving home from work, and I work in Saginaw, and I was on US 10, and I was passed by nine Midland Public School buses going the other direction. And it was really neat, I got to say, to see nine Midland Public School buses to haul all 250 Dow High band members, plus one of the buses. The ninth bus was a um, spirit bus for kids who wanted to go to the game to be in the buses. And it just, I, I thought it was very neat to see how many people actually went down to Fenton for the game. It was great. Um, let's see, over the weekend, I drove out to Mills and saw um, what isn't there anymore. So um, it was nice to see, step one. 
of our um, demolition. Step two begins the 20th. What I can't remember if it was Parkdale or Cook next. Parkdale. And Parkdale. The fence is up there, and we, you'll probably start seeing in the next couple of days some action over there. All right. And then the last thing, I want to send a big shout out tonight. Um, I, my oldest is a senior, and we just went through all the college application stuff. And I don't think that I appreciated up until now what the counselors do and what all the teachers do. The letters of recommendation that are required and the amount of, you know, input that the counselors have to give. And, you know, I heard a story that the counselors, I mean, they checked. They actually called one family because their child had not, as far as the counseling center knew, applied yet to college. And they wanted to make sure that this family was aware and just really want to thank all of them so much for all the extra that they put in to, you know, help this final step of these kids' MPS education, which is getting them set to go on to the next step. So I really want to thank all the counselors and all the teachers who have put in so much extra time to help all the kids complete their MPS education and get them ready for the next step. All right, the final thing. The ballots have been tallied. <laughs> Whoa, where'd you get that? Pardon me? Nothing. I didn't even see her come up and give it to you. It was magic. You must <laughs> Yes, if I had my iPad, she could have just <laughs> sent it to me. Okay, so the three board members who will be on the slate are Jerry, Lynn, and myself. So we will um, meet, I think, in the next, will it be this week sometime? No, 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 I'm sorry. Let me finish the next. That you, You'll be sent a, um interest sheet. Yeah. Oh. And then we ask that you just return that. The date will be on it. So return that just with your interest on um, board positions and also committee positions. And then there were a few positions that aren't even part of this board, but some, you know, like the Gerstacker and some of those types of um, positions that we also serve on. So, all right. I will turn it over to you, Mike. Thank you. A few weeks back, uh, with the Office of Civil Rights uh, audited our Career Technical Education Program. We were warned, we were mm -hmm. ready for that. Um, there was no complaints, we were just randomly chosen as they do so many audits per year, so there's nothing going on there. It's typical that they've never uh, have done an audit and not had a finding. Um, typically the findings are 12 to 15, they told us, and we had three, and we had three very minor ones. Uh, one had to do with um, signage, um, location of signage, and two other with some wording in, it, in documents that provided to them. And, and we provided a, you know, big old box of stuff to them to go through as well as they walked their facilities and audit the facilities out there. So that, I would say, it came out better than even we thought. I, mean, I think we were sweating that there was going to be a few other issues, but there was not. And so that's a very good thing. We had two uh, of our um, administrators kind of lead this uh, charge, and so I want to give credit to uh, Cynthia Marchese and Scott Cochran as they kind of mm. probably did the bulk of the work and the preparation for this, so we, we, we did very well there. Um, a few weeks back, we auctioned a few of our older buses. Um, as our fleet has gotten smaller, we have need for less buses, and so typically we auction our older buses when we're purchasing buses, and at this point we still haven't purchased buses, and so um, they go to auction. We use an auctioneer. Um, typically our buses <clears throat> um, end up in another country. They usually go to Latin America um, overseas and get reused. So these, uh, we actually had a couple buses this time that were picked up by another school district. Um, and so you can see some school districts are hurting and they're picking up some. Um, I think these two buses were 13 years old. So um, that is going on out there. So we're fortunate that we're not in that situation to go forward. Um, we have our uh, final. Well, I don't think it's certified by the state yet, but we have a final student count um, that look, that is going to leave us about approximately 100 students above our budget amount. So we can feel very good about where we stand right now in enrollment as well. Um, demolition projects, so Mills is um, at this point demoed. Um, um, the flat is pretty much clean. There's some small work left to do. It'd be, it's amazing to see that amount of a building removed in such a short period of time. Um, some sad, this, you know, see a building ever go, but it certainly is. <clears throat> I think Scott mentioned earlier um, 
about the insurance typical example when we have 19 buildings and we have no need and we have no need in the future for them um, it certainly is right size in the district where we need to go as, as difficult as that may be Parktail will go next and um, that probably will start this week and so over a couple weeks Parktail will be a little harder two floor building there and so they'll take a little longer time followed by Cook and then tonight you approved the uh, bid on the center project um, that one is probably the most difficult one so you're separating some parts from a building mm -hmm. and in that bid um, it wasn't just a bid to demo uh, the bid is also when we demo um, the auditorium and the, and the adjacent areas that are staying with the auditorium will actually be open and so they'll build the wall there instead of building a temporary wall they'll actually build the wall that's going to permanently be there so some of those some of that dem bid that you bit gave out tonight was also the rebuilding of that it's also part of relocating locating the power, the gas there so it can be heated going forward and there's no sense in the end doing, spending money to do a temporary line. This will be the permanent line that will eventually power both the auditorium and the elementary. So the, those were also part of that bid. Kind of new dollars put in with the demo project. So I wanted to point that out for you as, as you went forward. Um, a few weeks back, the state has um, given a good direction finally on the teacher evaluation and the weighting of it as we go forward. As you know, we were quite pretty far down that process of adopting a new uh, uh, teacher evaluation format. Um, the, the administrators have been uh, trained, teachers have gotten a little bit of training at this point in time, ongoing training throughout the school year um, that is called 5D Plus, and um, it has created a lot of very good instruction um, discussion about instruction in our district so um, so far it's been a very good um, discussion there's probably a little fear of the change but I think everyone fear that it, we're, it's a good change and so we've had uh, very good discussions going forward also in the last few weeks we've had MSTEP data released a little bit by the state so we got um, a statewide score you saw that <clears throat> and as expected the state scores were quite low but this is a recalibration with uh, much higher standards and a much different test and so it's setting that standard and with the hopes that we move uh, student learning going forward so as well as they have not released our data but um, Mary Shilton and Brian and those have put together our data based on the we've been released student individual data just for ourselves not for parents yet and we can take that data and we can accurately predict our score sometimes slightly off um, but we can predict our scores and our scores are um, lower than the previous MEEP test but still um, as large a gap above the state as we've been in the past if not more and so um, we may actually and some of these tests look look pretty good um, the scores will be very good out there and so there's other areas that show some weaknesses because that's what this new test was supposed to show going forward remember it's the first time that these students have taken a test online as well so there's some um, I think loss of what of demonstrating what actually what they know based on just that online um, getting used to that online piece as we go forward as well more of that will be released soon and Brian will have lots of that information for you uh, most recently also the ACT results for our juniors um, was released and we're happy to report that um, we've got our highest score ever so we equal our highest score ever in this district and that score that we equal was a time where only your best took the ACT mm -hmm. so those college bound ch students who chose to take the ACT which was like a 30 percent of your population took it and um, now we have to test 100 percent of kids special education students include it and we have equaled that best with a, an improvement and I'm going to lose a num number here Brian 23.0 wow. oh, so we're right. quite good state average was 99 and so you can see we're well above that and, and that's a large gap if you know the ACT world of scoring so very good there as well um, wrote to you a little bit about teacher recruitment so um, there truly is a, who would ever thought we'd say this a few years back but there's a teacher shortage out there in certain designated areas math science special education CTE those type of areas we're having some t difficult times already filling some of those positions and if you recall in our last collective bargaining agreement there will be an early retirement incentive and we're expecting 25 or more teachers to retire this spring and so uh, we will need to get very aggressive to get the quality of teachers that we want so our um, HR department departments are already busy working on that um, from what job fairs will go to to what our recruiting materials will look like to make sure we're, we're really able to draw the top candidates to Midland Public Schools and fill those positions. 
I uh, wrote to you a little bit about pre-Labor Day start. And so um, if you remember General Grandma about 10 years ago, and, and with the push from the, the business uh, members in our state, uh, it became a, a start after Labor Day. <clears throat> uh, there's been some exceptions granted in, throughout the state in the last few years. And um, it, it has to do with if you're involved in an early college program or CTE programs that work with college programs because their calendar is different than ours. And so when those two don't line up, students are losing learning days involved in that calendar. And so um, the, our county is looking at applying for that waiver. But essentially what it would mean, we would start one week earlier, four day different, we'd still have the Friday before Labor Day off, but that would get you out four days earlier in the spring as well and not lose instructional days and lined up in that calendar. Uh, yet to be seen what will occur, but we're in the process of applying for that. The teacher association seems to be on board. We've had initial discussions about it. And so we'll see if that waiver goes through or not. I think a lot of people would look forward to that if it does go through. Um, talked about a countywide CTE program as well. Mm -hmm. Presently in our county, <clears throat> we do allow students to attend other CTE programs, but it's very unusual that anyone takes that opportunity to do so. And it's really about some barriers that we have in place uh, preventing that from happening, from transportation to um, how we advertise and recruit that. And so the four local districts have um, looked at that again, and we've done some work where we believe um, we're gonna become much more countywide. Now that we offer over 90% of the programs, um, it, this very much involves in the public schools. And we have taken a look at um, the number of seats and capacity we have in our CTE programs. And we have capacity to allow enough seats for the other three to be in our programs without having any issues bumping our kids except for welding. And so welding's at capacity because mainly because of space um, to do so. But the other three then will take advantage of the, the Greater Michigan Construction Academy program uh, where they have welding now as well. So they'll be able to pick up that piece of it. Um, this also would allow some of our kids to go to programs that we don't have. There's not many that, of those, uh, but for I gave you the example of um, Coleman's Ag Science mm -hmm. Program, great program. Right now our kids, um, we have, we've had one each year in the program, but it's really that barrier of travel. And so we're working on a travel agreement where one bus would start at the end, one end of Saginaw, one would start on the other end of Saginaw, <laughs> and we could, would move these kids along uh, working with each other. So we're gonna try to move that barrier to make those type of things happen. It would also prevent us, uh, this would help us assist not sending our kids out of county, because right now some of us send kids to Bay Aranac Trade mm -hmm. Center. Uh, Coleman sends some to Claire Gladwin. Um, we could house those in, within our own district. Most likely it's a financial gain for us as we would probably gain more membership than the, those receiving as we offer more programs as well. So I, I see it as a win-win for Midland Public Schools in participating in, and a win-win for our county. I mean, this is about our kid, the kids in the county getting the best education they can. Northwood University contacted me again about their property we've been talking about in the back of Dow High School. Uh, Dr. Pretty is looking at um, having a purchase agreement signed up and leaving the dollar amount blank as we haven't fully agreed to that. We talked about the dollar amount and appraisal in the FFO committee, uh, the appraisal that that he had, we thought it was a little low, and so we've asked for a, a larger amount, and I do think we'll meet, reach agreement very close, and so he, he felt the same. So I think that's gonna move forward, and um, very possibly you could see that on the December agenda, and we'll do it. We have a December FFO meeting, we'll mm -hmm. talk about that there as well. So I'm expecting him to be able to make that timeline. If not, that the latest will be January. Um, if you recall, when Blake Sobel, our technology director, left last spring, we moved Dave Dietzik into that position as an interim, and Dave has performed very well, and so we feel very comfortable to removing that interim title, so congratulations to Dave. Um, our STEM elementary school, as you know, was designed with all the bells and whistles that everyone wanted, and we were significantly over budget, and this, which is not unusual. And then it goes back to the drawing board for some changes, and so we've made several changes to it without losing, I, I believe, anything that anyone even would notice. Mm -hmm. um, but to the architect, it's quite painful because, you know, our <laughs> architects are designing a you know, beautiful building, and so we've reduced that to a small enough amount that um, uh, we felt comfortable going ahead and bidding this because we expect bid savings, you always do. The, the estimators know their job, they build you the worst case scenario, um, and we would expect bid savings going through 
we're pretty comfortable to say that we'll get bid savings, but we'll still probably end up a little bit over budget. And so we took a look in um, our FFO community. What would that mean? You know, what, just give them examples. What would that mean if we were over budget there? Where would we have to skinny other things? And um, it doesn't look too painful to do that. We hoped to not have to do some of those things. Um, what I know about having handled the bond before, by the time you get to the very end of it, <clears throat> generally you've significantly came under enough times, a little bit here, a little bit there, that you're generally able to put those things back into the, to the uh, bond. Now, we're not gonna get Martin Mal and French to guarantee that or say that because right. that's their job to go the other way. So we feel comfortable moving forward at this point anyway, knowing that we've got a little bit of work to do on the budget and design. And I think um, now that we've given the okay, we've had, our, we've had architectural drawings, which would do nothing for the public really to see uh, what an architectural drawing of the school is. We're gonna get our artist drawings soon and we'll be able to, at that point, um, we have the STEM strategic plan that Brian and I have uh, proposed to our foundations in several spots at that point we'll know if we have our foundation support and we'll present to the public at a board meeting mm -hmm. our stem strategic plan and the artistic drawing of our school um, i'm kind of hoping that could be december but it's probably going to be after the first year as my guess is we'll, we'll present that to everybody in the public and roger help us get that word out so we're about ready to present open that all up to the public as we go forward and remember that not only do we have Rep City Rendezvous on Friday, but we also have the Santa Parade. If any of you guys would like to join my wife and I <laughs> in, the, in walking the Santa Parade this year, please do so on Saturday. So that is all I have for you. Well, thank you very much. So yeah, once we get those drawings out of the new elementary school, everyone I think will be as excited as some of us who have been yes. seeing them develop our, it's gonna be a great, great, great school. All right, is there anything else? All right, with that, we end the meeting. Thank you all very much.